Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Prince Renatal has taken the Hearthstone meta by a storm, and it really has changed a lot of things. This 3 minute 3 4 with your deck size and starting health are 40. That has been a huge change. You can put 40 cards into a deck. How awesome is that? Now you don't have to cut so many cards, you can fit all everything that you want into your deck. Well, actually, that is the downside of Prince Renatal. You don't really want to play with 40 cards. You want to play with as few cards as possible, so that your deck is as consistent as possible, so that you will be able to do whatever you want to do with that specific deck as fast as possible. But then, starting health being 40, that is a big boon, because that of course means that you are less vulnerable to aggression, you have more leeway to play with, and that is just good. So I recently built a Control Warrior deck, and I chose not to use Prince Renatal in a Control Warrior. Hey, it's a Control deck, why don't you put Prince Renatal into it? I got a bunch of questions about why don't you just put Prince Renatal into every deck? Isn't it just always good? But that deck size, that's actually a minus. And in this video, I want to explore this subject a little bit more, and I wanted to explore it with some help from data. First, a little peek at the winner of Prince Renatal. So, Quest Priest. Quest Priest enjoys Renatal so much. I mean, Quest Priest is just as it has the right curve, enough 2 ghost cards, 3 ghost cards, 4 ghost cards. It doesn't mind that much that there's 40 cards in the deck. You can always just tutor for the shard anyway once you manage to shuffle it into your deck. And Priest also has a hero power that synergizes incredibly well with having extra health because Priest can just heal itself a lot, so that just gives Priest all of that extra buffer. So, looking at Quest Priest decks right now, almost all of them are Renatal decks. It's very hard to find non-Renatal Quest Priest decks nowadays. This isn't the top of the list. I mean, these are sorted by win rate, but there are still several Quest Priest decks that are above these ones. But we have a Quest Priest deck at 53.7% win rate, 11,000 games played, 52.6% with 3,200 games played. And then, this is actually the highest performing non-Prince Renatal Quest Priest deck. 1000 games played, 52.3% win rate. So that is quite clearly inferior to all of the Renatal decks, many, many Renatal decks above it. So yeah, here, obviously, putting Prince Renatal into your Quest Priest, that's a great idea. You should do that. At the other end of the spectrum, we have Fell Demon Hunter. Fell Demon Hunter decks, these are actually the Fell Demon Hunter decks with most games played. So we have Fell Demon Hunter decks without Prince Renatal for the most part, 24,000 games played, 54.6% win rate, not bad. 9,500 games played, 56.7% win rate, quite impressive. And then we have this one Prince Renatal Fell Demon Hunter, which is actually the best performing Prince Renatal Fell Demon Hunter. 720 games played, 50.3% win rate. All right, sample sizes are large enough that we can tell that that deck is never, ever, ever going to reach, for example, that 9,500 game deck with 56.7% win rate. So clearly here, putting Prince Renatal into Fell Demon Hunter has not been productive. But why hasn't Prince Renatal been good for Demon Hunter? If we look at the card performance of that Prince Renatal Fell Demon Hunter list, we can start to see the problem. Prince Renatal here, second worst card, but hey, that happens with every Prince Renatal deck. Prince Renatal is in the deck, but you really don't want to draw that one, it's not a very useful card, so you do have one pretty dead card in your deck. But other than that, well, the first, the best cards. Curtis Demon Render, Zilak of the Abyss, Chase Dark Weaver. Bell Demon Hunter has a number of very, very strong plays, but it doesn't have any ways to really tutor for those plays, so it just wants to draw them, and when you put 40 cards into your deck, your games are not going to be very long, as you add more cards to your deck, but your power moves are still the same, and they're still singletons, it just makes it more difficult to find access to those. And on the other hand, we have Lady Steno here at the very bottom, being clearly by far the weakest card in the deck. How is that possible? Lady Steno is a pretty decent card typically in Fell Demon Hunter. That's also explainable by the presence of Prince Renatal. Because Prince Renatal, you have to add more cards to your deck, you have 40 cards in your deck, Lady Steno synergizes with spells. But most of the extra cards that you add in order to go from 30 to 40 cards are actually going to be minions. There are not that many spells that you can add. So you're going to dilute your deck, you don't have as many spells anymore. 
so you won't be able to use as many spells to synergize with Lady Steno, so you make Lady Steno worse. So adding Prince Renatal to Fell Demon Hunter makes it less likely that you find your real power plays, and it makes your Lady Steno worse because it makes it less likely that you will find the synergies, so now you might start to see the problem. 40 cards in a deck is punishment. Quest Priest is able to overcome this punishment, because Quest Priest really, really benefits from having 40 health, and also Quest Priest can still keep the mana curve similar. The same relative quantities of 2 mana cards, 3 mana cards, 4 mana cards, so you will still progress through the quest line the same as before. And there are also other decks that do benefit from Prince Renatal, like Prestor Druid for example. Prestor Druid's glory days are kind of gone already, Prestodruid was really strong at the start, when Prince Renatal was just introduced, the meta was in flux. But now that there's more solid decks being introduced and more solid decks being played more widely, Prestodruid it's still barely able to hit that 50%, but not that great anymore. Anyway, Prestodruid. What does Prestodruid do? Prestodruid wants Lady Presto, transform minions in your deck into random dragons. And then it wants a large number of cheap minions that it can transform into dragons, get some good effects, and win the game through that. And Presto Druid has ways to tutor for the key card, Lady Prestor. There's just one key card, and there's four tutors for it. Two copies of Capture Cold Tooth Mine, two copies of Jerry Carpenter, which tutor for the Cold Tooth Mine, which in turn tutors for Lady Prestor. So okay. Even though you're now running a 40 card deck, you still have five cards, on which you only really need to draw one in order to get your thing going. And you're rewarded by having 40 health, because you're a bit slow at the start, so that makes you survive against aggression, and it's just pure benefit. However, the biggest beneficiary of Prince Renatal has actually been Hunter. Yeah, that's quite unimaginable, but yeah, Hunter. And it's not Face Hunter, it's not your grandfather's Hunter, it's Beast Hunter, and it's Quest Hunter. These sort of mid-range Hunter decks. And these slower Hunter decks, they can have a lot of powerful cards. Hunter typically has access to a pretty large pool of good strong cards for the mid-game. But the problem is that if you start putting those cards into your Hunter decks, then okay, do you actually survive long enough to be able to use them? Well, Renatal gives these decks 40 health to start with, okay, so they're able to survive better. And because Hunter has access to a good card pool at the moment, probably the best 40 card card pool of all classes at the moment, that means that the penalty of having to run 40 cards in your deck doesn't really affect these decks. And the results are pretty clear. When we can see like Beast Hunter, 25,000 games played, 59.2% win rate, compared to a non renatal list of 17,000 games played, 54.5% win rate. That is a huge difference. And that's just how good Renatal is in Hunter. Hunter really doesn't have the tools to play a control deck. That just doesn't happen. Control Hunter, still a dream. But Hunter has tools to play very strong mid-range decks that are a little bit vulnerable in the early game. Renatal helps them solve their problems, and then they can just keep pushing. And they can punish control decks, and they can out-survive aggro decks. And boom, suddenly we are in a Hunter meta, where Quest Hunter and Beast Hunter are the two best decks in the game. However, things are not always as clear-cut as the example of Big Spell Mage shows us. Well, Big Spell Mage. People are still playing Big Spell Mage without Renatal. People are playing Big Spell Mage with Renatal. Like, the biggest sample sizes here are 57.5% win rate, 1300 games. Renatal Big Spell Mage. 57.5% win rate, 1600 games. Non-Renatal Big Spell Mage. Here, Renatal clearly has the positive effect in that it allows Big Spell Mage to survive better in the early game, but the penalty of running 40 cards in a deck is just about as much of a penalty as 40 health is reward, so they cancel each other, they even, even out, and Big Spell Mages with or without Renatal are both viable. And this is actually really interesting, because we're quite early in the standard rotation for this year, we still have two full expansions coming. And that means that as the card pool increases, it's probably like Big Spell Mage. If this kind of archetype survives to murder at Castle Natria, it's more likely that it's going to survive as a Prince Renatal deck than that it would survive as a non Renatal deck. As the card pool gets bigger, you have more strong options to choose from, and that means that the punishment for running Renatal in your deck becomes smaller, and therefore Renatal relatively becomes stronger. It won't become sufficiently strong to run it in like Fell Demon Hunter or Murloc Shaman or something like Face Hunter. But it can become strong enough to break the tie in case of like Big Spell Mage and make the Renatal Big Spell Mage unequivocally better. So there you have it. Prince Renatal is a strong card, 
40 health is a great asset, but putting 40 cards in your deck is a penalty. And it can clearly be seen in Money of the Archetypes that that penalty outweighs the benefits of getting 40 health. And that's why you will not run Prince Renatal in all decks, but as the card pool gets stronger and you will have better and better options, then the wider pool of decks will want to have Prince Renatal in order to reap the benefits with lower and lower cost. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Twitch channel.